everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we were going to talk about pride, but we're, we're going to do that again in a little bit here. No, fuck it. We're going to talk about it now. So I should just start this whole thing over. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where where we are going to talk a little bit about Pride, Pride Month, and how all of you are gay. And that's cool. Nobody's judging. At least not on my side of the fence here. I was going to do this as just a video on my channel, but... There's a poetry element to this, and I'm going to read a poem. So, I figured I should do it on the goddamn podcast, okay? Since I already get enough grief for not reading enough poems on this show. So, um, a couple things real quick, right off the bat. Um, The voting for Blood Rag Poet of the Year is off and running and good effing lord. I should have thought about this a little bit better. How so, you say? I should have made it to where the voting took place on some sort of site because my email box has been getting just bombarded, which is fine. I don't mind, but it's just like, good fucking Lord. Like my phone's like, bling, 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 bling. and for some reason, most of the people who vote on this do it in the middle of the fucking night. So um, I'm laying in bed and my, my eyes are like, oh, bling. And I open my eyes, start to go back and say, Bling. open my eyes, look around. It's fucking crazy. But I gla- I'm glad that this many people give a shit. So, fucking awesome. Keep the votes coming in. That's cool as shit. And so I guess, um, on with the show. Huh? 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 Okay, so today, this being Pride Month and all, I wanted to talk a little bit about how just fucking disgusting a large portion of this country is being. And again, this is just America we're talking about here. I'm not talking about what's going on in the rest of the world because I don't know what's going on in the rest of the world, okay? The amount of anger and hate and, like, fucking just murderous thoughts that are coming out of a group of people. And I know it's not a huge group of people because when you look at polling, like something like 60 to 70% of the country thinks that everyone should just like leave trans people alone and be totally cool with gay marriage and everything. So I, I don't understand this ridiculous... I mean, I get it. It's just clickbaity shit, but it's fucking annoying. You know, like all that shit with Target, like Target had a bunch of Pride Month outfits and shirts and all this stuff. People lied about what they actually had there and um, fucking tiny face melon head fucks like Charlie Kirk sent his fucking brain dead followers into Target stores to skull and bones fucking douchebags. And so because there were like rainbows and shit on clothes like these people completely lost their minds and they're freaking out about people grooming their kids and it's it's like these people have no control over their children if you raise your kids right i i, I shouldn't even fucking say that because um y- you people raising your kids right is going to be a lot different than how i would hope a sane human being would raise their kids but here's the fucking bottom line what the fuck does any of this matter like there are people running for president whose whole basic fucking platform is go woke go broke and i'll end woke and woke dies and woke 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 it's so fucking stupid and the thing that cracks me up even more about this the people who are going to be affected by a Republican president that does absolutely nothing for low to middle class people are the same people who are the ones going out and supporting these people at rallies and going into Target and trying to fucking burn the whole fucking place down. The party does not care about you. 
at all. They care about your vote, and that's it. They're not going to fucking do a goddamn thing for you. What is one Republican policy that you can actually point to and say, this benefits me. This benefits me and my community financially will make my community a better place. Name one fucking thing that does not have to do with culture war bullshit or racist fucking propaganda, and you will not be able to find a single fucking thing. But here is my thing. Here is my here is my present to Pride Month. Okay. The people who scream the loudest against the gay community are the people who in the dark dabble in the gay community okay the people who are so angry and mad about it and need to do something about it right now are the same people that if you took their phones and looked at it there'd be tons of gay ass porn on there the people who are really mad at the trans community tons of trans porn on there guaranteed all these preachers who are saying like murder these fucking sodomites and all this other shit if you go back to their high school and start asking around, start digging around, all you investigative journalists out there, if you exist, do the fucking world a favor and out these lunatics before people fucking get killed. More people than already have. Do the fucking world a service. Go after these fuckers and pull those skeletons out of their closet. I'm fucking serious. I, I will bet you money that you will find all sorts of shit under these rocks. The people who bark the loudest are the people who don't want you to see what they have. And they will never fucking get it. All of these fucking, like, 20-year-old fucking MAGA fuckers who are like, I'm gonna go fucking beat up a drag queen. I got my gun. Dude, they're all shoving, like, long vegetables up their back door when no one's looking. Or have a drawer full of latex stuff serious just do some fucking digging here and so i have a poem for you out of my new book it's on page 130 okay this is called men watch porn men watch porn dudes fucking chicks men watch porn wet snatches slammed men watch porn cocks disappearing cocks reappearing repeatedly quickly from behind from the side from underneath balls slamming assholes balls slamming clits throbbing cocks and hands spurting white on skin men watch porn seeing more cocks than cunts the sight of a cock now makes men hard pavlov's dog drooling on cock men watch porn straight porn gay porn cock hungry confused they are gay just suck a dick if you want to suck a dick get your ass fucked if you want your ass fucked don't worry about what label you fear to wear you don't have to wear shit enjoy your sex it's your business only yours unless you want to be proud and talk about it during pride you know what i'm saying none of this shit matters if there is a gay couple somewhere in your vicinity nothing will actually happen to you all of this shit of like people going like uh, i just i I, I don't want, like, grooming happening. I don't want this, like, bombarded in my face and all this other fucking shit. What do you think straight people have been doing to people ever since forever? Every fucking movie you watch, every TV show you watch, every book you read, every everything is a straight couple gonna kiss, gonna do more. That's in your face. And believe it or fucking not, there are people who have never liked that. And who have always felt kind of weird about that. But we have made them watch these things. We have normalized that as like, you have to like this. It's, it's just, it's so fucking stupid. And then I love the other thing where 
like all these dudes who like want to go beat up a bunch of gay dudes at the same time have tons of porn at their house where two chicks are fucking wearing each other like a Rolex. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's totally cool. That's fine. You know, because, you know, women, you know, what the fuck? It's fucking stupid. Nothing at all will harm you. And then all the stuff that happens at school that you call grooming? Oh, my fucking God. Don't be so fucking thick. No one is coming for your stupid fucking kid. Nobody fucking cares. Being gay is not something that you're just like, oh, my God. I'm eight and it's Thursday. I'm gay now. That's not how it fucking works. That's not how it's ever worked. No one is going to be turning anyone's kids anything. Now, if you're worried about, like, kids experimenting and stuff and you don't want that happening, think of all the dumb shit you did when you were in high school. I'm sure you went through some weird, awkward hip-hop phase that made you look like a douchebag, you know? Like, let fucking high school-aged kids discover who the fuck they are. This is also why I don't like shoving religion on kids. Like, when I raised my kid, I did not raise my kid with any kind of religion. I told my kid, if you want to go to church, if you want to check out any religion out there you want, I'm totally supportive of you doing that. If you want to ask my opinion about anything, I will tell you what my opinion is. But this is your journey. This is your shit. Figure it out. This is this is up to you. I'm not going to force you into a religion that you don't believe in and have you brainwashed with a bunch of crap that is going to make you feel guilty your whole fucking life. I, I don't understand it. And I probably should have pulled this up, but um, maybe I'll do something else about this. But, like, I came across that group. I can't remember what the fuck they're called. But this group of really hardcore conservative religious formalist poets who write these horrific, awful poems about murdering trans people and stuff. Like, that's fucking cool. And, oh, man, you know, but did you check my meter? How badass am I? Am I right? It's a bunch of fucking bullshit. It just, it makes me fucking sick. That every time I feel like we have progressed so much as a society, some group of fucking douchebag idiots take us back to the fucking Stone Ages. It drives me fucking crazy. Oh my fucking god. I'm gonna be going over some stuff and comments from the last couple podcasts I've done, and... I'm going to be doing my own commentary on my own podcast, if that makes any fucking sense. So one thing I wanted to talk about is this whole idea in that article, the stupid fucking Vice article. There's some things that I need to say about that that I found out since I did the episode. One, the chick who wrote it is quite young, I think. In my terms of young, she's quite young. So her having a fucking midlife crisis at fucking 25 blows my fucking mind. Second, I don't think she's a fucking poet. When I looked her up, it turns out she is a journalist, which I guess means that she has shitty opinions about stuff and writes clickbaity articles about it and probably uses ChatGPT for a lot of it. And then whatever fucking Facebook group she's a part of. So whatever. Um, the next thing I found out about it, or one thing that I thought was interesting that I wanted to bring up, is the hashtag poetry is not dead was one that um, she brought up is like, these idiots, da 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 da, um, using these hashtags can call themselves poets. Here's the fucking thing that I don't think, like, the irony fucking slaps you in the face with the fucking giant flaccid dong is that why do you think that is the hashtag that people are using poetry is not dead that implies that before that hashtag people assumed poetry was dead what kind of poetry do you think they were talking about hmm. exactly they're talking about the poetry that you are saying is the better poetry. 
Here's the thing that I don't think people understand about me, and I've said it over and over again, and I don't think people fucking get it. I think formal poetry has its place, and I think it should exist. I don't fucking care if you write formal poetry or not. I'm not going to fucking read it, because I don't give a fuck. I really just don't fucking care. So the, the question here is, why is it that you are so fucking terrified and scared and annoyed that free verse poetry fucking exists? The reason why people don't speak up against formal poets and articles like that that I fucking went off on is because nobody fucking even thinks about formal poets outside of academia and academic presses. Nobody thinks about it. Like, you guys are seriously on no one's radar. So with that said, since you guys are on no one's radar, it just bums me out at how above everyone else you think you are. And the funny thing is, I act like people who are formal poets even fucking listen to this show or give two shits about it. But here's the thing, and I'm fucking calling Anarchy Crew out on this, dude. Like, you guys have a new mission, and we're all in this together, and we're gonna fucking do this. And I want all the free verse poets out there to fucking do this, too. I'm not calling for violence or anything like that, but if formal poets and douchebags like the chick who wrote that fucking article... And every other fucking article that I've been pissed off about. When these people talk, when these people say shit, like, it's shit, or these shitty poets, or, like, nothing they write can be good, right? And things of this nature, don't take it anymore. Fucking let them know that they are fucking wrong. Stand up to them. Knock them out of their fucking academic ivory towers. Like, I'm done. I was um, on a podcast recently where I was saying how, like, I feel like there are people who send me articles who tell me things that people say because they know I'm going to run my mouth about it. And they know I won't shut up about it. And I don't know if they're scared or intimidated or what to stand up and just say, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You are a part of a dying art that I don't want to die. I want it to be able to fucking thrive. And when I do this shit, a lot of times I'm trying to fucking tell formal poets things they can fucking do to fucking be relevant at all. And so, like, there's a part of me that, like, wants to fucking help, but at the same time, they can't get out of their own fucking way. And they just go, well, fuck, man, God, like, it's not very good, you know, it doesn't take any skill. Mm. And instead of just saying, like, oh, we're a part of something that's dying, how can we fix this? How can we make this better? How can we reach new audiences? How can we, like, open up and broaden out? They just act like all this other poetry that is popular and making money and the whole fucking thing... They look at it as not a thing. And that's what happens when civilizations crumble, you know? Like, people just go, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Eh, that's awful. Like, no one, eh, no one likes that. But numbers don't fucking lie. And when numbers don't lie, this is what happens. And I'm going to be doing an episode here really soon on actual... Um, poetry sales numbers over the years and i'm fucking over the moon about this article that i found so i'll be sharing that with you guys here really soon but it's just like the reason why the hashtag is poetry is not dead is because they're trying to tell people that hey guess what poetry is not dead and the only ones to blame for that the only ones to blame for that hashtag existing are the formal poets. Figure it out. So, I'm not going to try to fucking help you anymore. I have lots of episodes where I've tried to fucking help you people. Now, we're just coming for your throats. You can't seem to not talk shit. So, we're going to fucking throw down now.
That's the deal. So, again, Anarchy Crew, listeners of the show, free verse poets everywhere, insta poets. When formalists start talking shit, fucking go right back at them. Do not let their fucking degrees or their fucking snooty fucking boring ass nature make you afraid to say anything to them. Because cause they're nothing. Like, they say shit because they don't know what else to say. They go, well, it's not poetry. It doesn't follow the rules. So it's not real. Like, they'll say whatever the fuck they want to say about it. But just know that they don't have anything on their side to help back anything they're saying. Except their piece of paper that they paid way too much money for that they'll never be able to pay off. That says... They're good at this, allegedly. So whatever. And I know that I'm generalizing a lot, but I'm just, I'm pissed off and I'm fucking tired. I'm fucking tired. But the funny thing is, I think a lot of you guys like it when I talk about this because I still get stuff of people saying, do this, do this, do this. So whatever. If you guys like me talking about it, I'll keep talking about it. But um, there's bigger fish to fry. So I don't know. And I wanted to read some comments because some of these are going to knock your socks off. Okay, the first one I want to read here, um, well, first off, there's some people who think I'm really funny. So let's just, um, I swear I laughed through this entire thing. Thank you, Tamara. <laughs> I need to go back and rewatch. My son started laughing too. Caitlin says, do something about it, you fuck. Thank you for that line. <laughs> Oh, shit. And Julia said something pretty cool here. Most of the poets with huge followings also show up consistently. Very few people do that. I'm also impressed by their work ethic. That alone is aspirational. Poets with huge followings are doing stuff all the fucking time to cultivate that. And that is something that traditionally published formal poets don't understand because they usually have a... A marketing machine behind them doing those things. Uh, but he says, people are ridiculous. I wish everyone who reads and writes poetry would listen to your podcast and think about what you have to say. Scream from the rooftops, my friend. And then Ethan, and thank you, buddy. And then Ethan said, um, I think you're giving the author of this article too much credit. <laughs> uh, the way they use poetic terms, I don't believe they know what the hell they're talking about. I have to fucking agree. But this, this um, from Wicked Hole, the fucking goat, dude. Let me tell you what was said here. (sighs) Why so much emphasis from this person on good poetry not being understandable on the first read? Firstly, lots of old historically revered poems are easy to understand. I remember having to read Longfellow in fourth or fifth grade, The Wreck of the Hesperus, and Paul Revere's Ride. One if I land, two if I see. Two narrative poems meant to tell stories in a rhythmic, memorable, and clearly understood way. The first about a ship in a storm, and the second about Paul Revere racing on his horse to warn his fellow countrymen that the British were coming. Not difficult to take in on a single read. Secondly, is clarity not a virtue in poetry? Why is something that's easy to understand automatically pegged as writing for those with a limited attention span? A poem that is easily understood need not be a a poem that's easy to write, I dare say. It's something quite difficult to express yourself in plain terms in a poem. Some poets may even struggle with clarity and find it easier to write obscurely, hiding behind tons of metaphors which vaguely point to what a poem is getting at without the full work of actually getting the reader where you want them to go. It is not always as simple as simple equals stupid and complex equals smart. Also, Rupi Cower's poems average three to five lines each. Yeah, so does the average Stephen Crane poem, like the guy who wrote The Red Badge of Courage, and the average Sarah Teasdale poem, and many of the most famous poems by a number of old-ass poets are about that short. Tennyson's The Eagle, Hausman's Infant Innocence, D.H. Lawrence's Retort to Whitman, Yeats's A Stick of Incense, Raymond Carver's Late Fragment, not to mention hundreds of Emily Dickinson poems. Also, this person mentions haiku, but brushes any similarity away by saying, 
like oh like haikus are meaningful and instant poetry isn't are these all not poetry are they all not good enough or complicated enough to be proper literature if you can't draw the line at these old ass poets and poetry why so confidently draw it at these new ass poets and poetry so fuck dude adam you fucking eviscerated that in much shorter time than I did. So, props to you, dude. Oh my fucking god. That was like a master class in butt fucking right there. So, <laughs> god damn. God damn! Is what I'll say to that. Oh shit. Now, what I wanted to get to was an email from Ethan. Oh wow, this is really big. It's really bag. I don't know, your feet are kind of bag. Can I fit it all in there? That's what he said. Oh shit. So I'm gonna read this email because it's fucking amazing. And this is from Ethan. Matt, so I just got an idea from the convergence of four things. Listening to your I Hate Matt Wall pod episodes on formalism. Your pod episode with Bunny Wild. Watching Jet Li's movie Fearless and watching a rap battle. And I thought... This is a fun trope in these martial arts movies where there is a competition between styles of martial arts and two martial artists step into the ring to pit one style against another. You have this course in rap music in the form of rap battles. What then if you had a competition on the printed page? Your poetry style versus another poet's formal poetry style, perhaps in the form of a split chapbook, which would be the ring. The competition would be something like this. Two poets... One entering the ring with their free verse style, the other entering the ring with their formal style. Each would bring one or more themes about which both poets must write a certain number of poems. I would have a certain amount of time, they would have a certain amount of time to produce these poems, maybe one week or something like that. Then those poets would be pitted against each other side by side in a split chapbook. Something like that, maybe. That's the idea I had anyway. Now, who would the formal poet be? They'd have to be someone friendly to you, of course, open to the kind of competition. If you thought that was a good idea, I'd throw my hat in the ring, but feel free to take it to another formal poet, too. Uh, this is fucking awesome, and um, yeah, we should totally fucking do it. Um, let's fucking do that thing. The funny thing is, is that um, back when I was, like, super pissed off at uh, fucking... Elijah Precious Jerkoff, whatever his name is. I wanted to, I can't remember who I told this to. I remember I said it in the episode that I never released because that whole episode was like something that could get the, the FBI on my ass in three seconds. But um, what I wanted to do is go to Ohio or wherever the hell this dude's from, rent out a theater or some sort of room and then have like a three round fight okay where the first round is us debating poetry the next round would be getting like a prompt from the audience and we would sell tickets to this because we're not going to fucking do the shit for free you know if like we're going to be fucking um building like this like historic feud and everything like this we got to fucking put some asses in the seats you know what i'm saying we would debate poetry for however long we wanted to and then we would get a prompt from the audience and then write a poem in whatever fucking style precious wanted us to write the fucking poem in okay and then after that the third and final round would be us going into a fucking cage and beating the shit out of each other. And I just want you to fucking understand that by me saying that like that, I am being very fucking generous, okay? Um, and I think that would be awesome. I think what poetry is missing, like I talk about spilling blood on the page, you know? And I think poetry is missing just fucking spilling blood, dude. Like I think some brutal fucking like poetry carnage would be fucking awesome. You know, like, I'll fucking slay you with my words, and then after that, you know, dot, dot, dot. Like, I just, I, I fucking thought that would be fucking brilliant. And it's so funny, because, like, on, um, I guess it was in the Sleebrickett Secret Show, Substack. God, that's a lot of 
S sounds in there. Chat thing. Um, Elijah was in there saying something. And I'm like, yeah, dude, like, come on the show. Like, I'd love to have you on the show and we can fucking, you know, talk about it. And I'm sure I didn't say it that nice. I don't know, whatever. And um, he said something like he didn't want to come on the show, like to let him know in a couple months if I still want him on because he didn't want um, me to have this much hate towards him. Like when we were talking and I just, I left it alone. I wrote a couple things and then I just deleted them because I'm like, it doesn't fucking matter. Cause the point of the matter is I don't hate Elijah. I hate the stupid shit that comes out of his mouth that he thinks is fucking profound. And he's one of those guys that's never going to not say shit like that because this is just how he was fucking raised. Like he just runs his fucking mouth and nobody ever fucking says anything to him about it. And if there's ever any sense of confrontation that seems like might get dangerous, he's just like, oh, well, we just won't do this then. Okay, well, fucking put up or shut up, dude. Like, I don't know. So, like, I doubt he'll ever be on the show, but, and, like, I honestly don't fucking care. But if he ever wanted to fucking do that, if he ever wanted to fucking have, like, a cage fight or something, or some fun thing like that, I'd fucking do that in a fucking heartbeat, dude. Um, and a debate and, like, a write-off and whatever. Like, that would be great. This thing Ethan's talking about is not as, like... <laughs> This thing Ethan's talking about is a lot less um, uh, violent, I guess, but I like it. It's fun. So, um, yeah, I'm down. So, like, let's figure out how to put that together. I'm trying to think of what else. I just, I honestly feel like, though, that a lot of these academic types and formalist types have never, like, gotten their ass kicked, have never had, like, their face rubbed in dirt, you know, with a fucking knee on their back, you know? And I'm not trying to say this in like a fucked way, but when people say her, like when people talk shit and act like it's like, Oh yeah. You know, like blah, 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 blah. Like we could just talk shit cause we're civilized, you know, we're just, we're civilized people. I could just, totally take everything that means anything to you and tell you how fucking stupid it is and how like you are a fucking idiot and do not matter and that's fine because we're civilized and we can do that and it's like motherfucker no like you can say whatever you want but when you start fucking like getting down in it and acting like you're fucking better than me I'm gonna fucking show you that you are really not a whole lot you know, and I just feel like that whole group of people, like I said earlier, like they're fucking ivory fucking towers, dude. Like they just have never experienced fucking life. And that's honestly, when you read a lot of formal poetry, a lot of formal poetry sounds great because they know all the rules and everything like that. But it reads like people who have never lived and who have barely ever suffered and again, I'm generalizing, and I'm sure a lot of you can point out some really good poetry full of suffering that you could show me. Whatever, fine, great. I can only speak from experiences that I have had. And I just, I fucking want the free verse poetry fucking world to just fucking get a little fucking crazy, dude. Like, I'm just fucking tired, dude. Like, I'm seriously... And it's been, and if you guys have read some of my poetry, like, you know how I get, like, and I'm not trying to sound weird or anything like this, but, like, when I haven't gotten to a fight in a while, like, I get fucking, um, uh, fidgety. I don't, I don't know a better way of saying it. Ugh. I don't know. I just, I feel like our words, our ideas, our thoughts... The things that mean a lot to us, the things we stand for, mean so much to us, and they should mean that much to us. And it shouldn't be a thing where, like, I will just let you shit in my mouth over and over again, and I will chew it and swallow it and say, thank you, sir, for it. Like, we're done. We are fucking done. 
My next fucking thing is, is I don't think anyone should ever fucking go to school. Like, the whole thing here is the reason why academic formal poetry continues to exist is because people are still under the mindset that they need to go to university. Just fucking stop. There is no need for you to go get an education. (laughs) Hear me out, hear me out. In this world, with everything at the palm of your hand, everything at your fingertips, going to get a degree means fucking nothing. Anything you learn at school, you could find on fucking YouTube in three minutes. You know, you could actually find lectures from university on YouTube. A lot of universities, a lot of university departments have their own YouTube channels where they just upload their fucking lectures. You don't even fucking need to fucking go to school. Oh, but you want that piece of paper. What about the alumni? What about the connections? What about those things you get? Dude, get on fucking LinkedIn or something. Like, seriously, you do not need this stuff. And the worst part about it is it puts you in so much debt that you will probably, like, never pay that off unless someone in your family dies and leaves you a lot of money. And then you're like, oh, shit, I could put a down payment on a house and maybe pay off some of that student loan debt. So that's just another thing um, like that. And I want you to think about And if you do, congratulations, you are a very privileged motherfucker. But how many of you know people with college educations that are actually working in the field they have a degree in? Because I don't know that many people who do that at all. For the longest time, there was only one person I knew like that. And yes, I know a lot of people who went to university. Idiots. (sighs) I don't know. I just, I think the whole thing's a joke. And the fewer people who go to fucking college, who go to fucking university, who go into these fucking programs, the less people these people have to fucking hang on to. And I'm a fucking good sport and shit about, like, the fighting and everything. Like, we can beat the shit out of each other and feel good about it afterwards, you know? It's not like I'm going to beat the shit out of you and then follow you home and beat the shit out of you again. That's fucking crazy. But again, let's make an event out of it. Sell some fucking tickets, dude. This is how you fucking make money as a poet. This is how you fucking... You you diversify in your fucking... You have separate income streams. But I know that a lot of you formal poets don't know about this. And you don't know how to fucking make any money with your fucking poetry. So, um, if we could get some asses in seats, dude, that'd be awesome. Anyway, that was like a ridiculous rabbit trail that probably should never have taken place. But it did. Another thing I wanted to talk about. I want to give credit where credit's due. A lot of times when I talk shit on Republicans and the right... And all this stuff, I do that and I get really pissed off about it and say a bunch of horrible things and everything. I want to, I'm not going to walk anything back, but I'm willing to give some chances out. At least now I will just change it to MAGA people or MAGADonians as the Donald wants to call them now. Because I don't know if you guys saw this, but um, Chris Christie... Um, announced he was running. And, like, I don't think he's going to win. Whatever. But he went pretty hard on Trump, dude. And went really hard against the Macedonians. And had a lot of sane things to say. And I don't agree on a lot of his policy. And, like, we'll see how it goes or whatever. But he's not crazy. He's He seems like somebody who like can actually govern and not try to like blow the planet up while he's doing it. So the fact that Chris Christie came out and actually started talking shit on Trump when none of the other people running would, I'm, I'm interested to see how this goes. So now the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I know there are people who are Republicans out there who might listen to this show. So I'm just letting you know, I'm going to be more focused on who I talk about when I talk about those things. And I'm not going to throw the entire Republican Party under the bus unless the Republican Party is doing dumb shit, which, you know, could fucking happen 
in five minutes. We don't know. Just Chris Christie gave me a little bit of hope that even though I might not agree with the things that he says, like, I don't have to be worried that, like, my kid is going to fucking, like, be hunted down and murdered, you know? Mockingbird Wish Me Luck, the Bukowski book we're doing this month. Um, I'm going to be reading my favorite poems from the first part out of this book. The book's broken up into three parts. Um, and I'll be doing that live stream probably right after this um, for members on my channel. So if you'd like to be a part of that, just join any tier level and you will be able to get that. If you like this podcast and you're watching this on YouTube, please break that thumb and hit the subscribe button for me there. And then if you are watching this on YouTube, um, around here somewhere, there will be a playlist of a bunch of other podcasts you could listen to. Um, and if you were just listening to this on iTunes and other things, you already know how to find other podcasts and stuff. So that's good. Keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.